crispy little minis. I'm Rick. And I'm Dave. And this is a show where we paint miniatures, talk about Netflix and maple syrup. I just had to get that out of the way real early. Today. Yeah, okay. Um, and uh, <laughs> obviously we paint miniatures. <laughs> What are we yep. painting today, Dave? Uh, today we're painting stuff from uh, the River Horse game uh, Labyrinth. Nice. Um, Labyrinth, the board game. So this uh, particular game follows the, the story, mm -hmm. which is uh, Sarah has to rescue her bro brother from Jareth, the Goblin King, right. at the center of the labyrinth. Uh, and you get to play as either Sarah or uh, the wonderful creatures she encounters along yeah. the way. And uh, I'll so, be painting Ludo as one of those creatures. Ludo. Yeah, Ludo. Ludo. He's pretty cool. Yep. And, and we have... That sounds like an idea. Oh, there we go. So, Ludo. Uh, turn Ludo around. There we go. And uh, we've got Ludo, Sir Didymus on Ambrosia, uh, Hoggle. Hoggle. And Sarah are the... Um, the characters that you can play as there. And also in this awesome set comes... The man himself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the Goblin King. Oh. Like the, man, the, the back of the that back of him. is yeah, <laughs> crazy cool. It is. Swoop. It's coming around. It's coming around in a second. There he is. <laughs> I'm going to share this in a group. Okay, cool. And see what, if people want to come and, and participate with us. And there we go. Is Jareth the Goblin King, aka David Bowie? David Bowie. In one of his finest roles. Oh, I agree. Yep. I also liked him as uh, Tesla in, I think it was Prestige. Okay, right here. Yeah. Remember that movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, I, yep. I was just like, oh, so good. <laughs> Definitely good. But uh, Thursday, we're gonna be, I'm going to be painting with uh, Natasha and Gretchen. Mm -hmm. So I think that we'll leave those two, Sarah and Jareth, for, uh, for, them. for them to. Fight over? Fight over. <laughs> See, it's how I stole the burning head from them last week. Oh, right, on, right. Uh, they really Thursday. wanted to do that, too. They did. So now they, they know that we care. We do care. We care. For sure. <laughs> so I'm going to put this down. Yep. And we'll get to it. Oh, actually, I want to... I want to keep it up so you can... Just him. Hmm. He's big. He's orange. I think he may have been the costume. <laughs> the costume may have been made over from like leftover Mr. Snuffleupagus. Yeah, bits or pieces <laughs> of Muppet. <laughs> yep. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to paint Hoggle today, and I'm going to work on um, Sedidimus on Thursday. Thursday, I think. Nice. I think that's the way we're going to go. But uh, yes. So who do we have in the chat so far? Uh, so I wonder far. how many. Um, let's take a peek here. We have got Carl, Steve, Walter. What's up, everybody? Thanks for joining us. Um, for some reason, I having some. I'm having some Facebook difficulty, so I can't share it. So if you guys would be more than willing to share, that'd be awesome. Uh, some of the groups that. I normally would share it too, would be like Board Game Spotlight if you're in that, or just the Board Game Group, because um, we are playing yep. board games. It is true. Countries. So. And of course, if anybody's in a Jim Henson group. Oh, yeah, of course. So, Anybody, way to go. Or Labyrinth. <laughs> labyrinth, a specific, a specific um, Labyrinth group. Well, there's sure. a ball every year out in Cali, which yeah. is uh, Jareth's uh, like Goblin Ball. Oh, right, okay. It's a big costumed uh, event. And um, I'm sure that there's a group for that or, or something like that. <laughs> or just fans of the labyrinth. Who those mysterious hands belong to? <laughs> Thanks, Leona. All right. And then uh, just as a reminder, if you are in the board, in our Painting Happy Little Minis uh, Facebook group, um, after this episode in the group, we will be announcing the winner of the the mega paint set by Army Painter. Oh, cool. Um, which someone will win this awesome paint set. Excellent. And uh, yeah, so stay tuned after the program. I will announce that in the group. So, but you have to be a member of the group and you have to have, there's a post in there that you should have uh, put a work in progress underneath so we can uh, see where everybody's working on. That was like yep. was the that last Tuesday? 
Yes. Yep. Or no, Thursday before. Right. Tuesday. I can't remember. They're all they starting to it. mix in. The weeks are starting to blur. Yeah. Italian. You know, definitely like to give that away, which would be really cool. Yep. So any news on what's going on in the world of Dave? What's going on in the world of Dave? Mm -hmm. um, getting very close to the, the end of the, the book, sort of creation cycle. So very happy about that. Nice. Um, I've laid everything out. I've just got the last bits of editing to come back from my editor. Okay. And that should happen in the next uh, week or so. Okay. Um, in communication again with my printers about uh, all the specs and all that sort of fun stuff. Wow. So, uh, yeah, very excited. That in the end stages. Yep, it feels kind of crazy. It's super cool. It meant that I had enough time on the weekend to actually like paint something for myself. What? I know. I think I saw something in the group. Yeah, I posted something. Yeah. Yay. I posted it was something good. in there too last night. Yeah? Did you see it? The work in progress? The brush monster? Oh, yeah, yeah, I did. Owlbear? Yeah. How are they going? Good? Well, what you saw is where I'm at. <laughs> so work in progress. Yeah, work in progress. <laughs> I, I, I finished what I wanted, where I wanted to get with them last night before going to bed and thought, hey, I'll take a picture and post it up in the group. I haven't done that in a while. Right. And uh, then I was like thinking, I got lots of works in progress at my house. I should take <laughs> some pictures and get yep. some uh, advice on some things. Like I have the big five-headed blue dragon I'm working on. Right, yeah. And uh, a couple other things. So... You should definitely do that. Yeah. I was talking to Leona earlier this morning about works in progress, actually. Yeah? Yeah. And I think we might, you know, maybe make that a segment. Okay. On the program here. So, like, where we're bringing our, our stuff that, from home? And something that we're working on and, or, okay. and also highlight, like, uh, some of the works in progress that people in the Facebook group are... That's a cool idea. Are um, working on be like, yep. here's a couple works in progress from our group. This is a piece by Carl. It's a dragon with no with with white feet. I'm sure. I'm sure those feet aren't <laughs> white anymore. Are oh, they, Carl? <laughs> They're just fine. <laughs> but um, yeah, to, to highlight like all the cool miniatures that are being worked on. Um, if especially if anybody's working on something and they're at a, a sticking point, like you yeah, know, and and um, either you could comment on where they could go next or. Others that watch can be like, ooh, this would be cool, or what do you think about this as far as a technique that you could use That's to bring a good idea. this piece out or whatever? Yeah, I like that. So, Definitely cool. Yeah. What does everybody else think of that idea? If you say you don't like it, you're wrong. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. Out the gates. <laughs> Dave brings fire and brimstone. I wasn't going to do that. What? <laughs> We got something sitting over there on the table too, don't we? We do. We do indeed. Should I bring that out now? Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I want to like let everybody see the awesome that that is. So some folks who are in the group will know that uh, Michael Bruce from Emerald Dragon Games in Florida has da been. Da <laughs> are we allowed to use that sound? Da 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 Not for this. Da da. Oh no. No. You can use it for anything except for like sea creatures. Oh. Yeah. Dang it. Uh, so I was sitting here thinking that it something that, that would be funny to for a sound effect for this would be um, Shiny from uh, Moana. Okay. But that's a crab. <laughs> Dang it. Nice. But uh, yes, uh, Michael got excited uh, earlier in the year. I think it was probably in June mm -hmm. uh, when we were talking about uh, the charity stuff that we had coming up with the Nova Open Charitable Foundation. Yeah. And and said, I would like to paint something. So he painted it up and shipped it off last week and it arrived, uh, when did it arrive? I think it arrived on Friday. Nice. So. And though it is too late for it to be in the Nova Open, uh, do you have a plan for it? Uh, working on one at the moment. Yeah, too, too late for the Nova Open silent auction, which mm -hmm. is actually on, which is on site at Nova Open. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, working on a plan and once I have that, we'll I'm trying to think that. of a way, something, because you know we're doing on the 3rd of November, for all of you watching, oh, yeah. we're doing a, um, 
uh, extra life charity, 24 hour charity. That's right. Yeah. Um, broadcast. Maybe we can incorporate it into that charity. I think that'd be a fantastic yeah. idea. So, yeah. very cool. Yeah. Yes. That's awesome. Check so that thank out. you so much from all the. Look at it. No, it's it's, big, it's, it's bigger than Rick's face. Barely. <laughs> it is so cool. Even in the when you look at the front end there with the the beak and everything flared yep. out. So yeah, this is beautiful. And uh, yeah, thanks to uh, everybody down there, at Emerald Dragon and Bruce, especially uh, Michael or Michael Bruce. Sorry, no worries. <laughs> my my, my name there. dyslexia yep. kicked in. All good. But yes, thank you very much for that. That's definitely cool. I kind of want to take it out to the ship that's out in the front lobby with the other Kraken and be like, put it next to it. <laughs> <and be> like, <laughs> this, these, this crew is it's not going to make it. No chance. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> You should totally do that. Take a take a picture of that and be like, oh. Yep. You know, it would be really cool is if we could get a, man, I, I don't even want to say it for, jinx, for the fact that I'd probably jinx it. Right. But uh, Say it anyway. <laughs> WizKids has that really nice looking ship that they're. Oh, the Fallen Star. The, the Fallen Star. Yep. Maybe we could get one of those as a giveaway before you can buy it. That'd be nice. For the, for the charity. That'd be oh, sick. Yeah. Definitely. Have to check with Justin. I think that'd be awesome. Very cool. So we got, let's see what we got going on in here. Hey, Mel. Um, Dave did hobby. Do, do Bowie's, <laughs> do Bo Bruce says, do Bowie's bulge justice. <laughs> uh, Rusty says, hi, Dave. Hey, Rusty. Um, Mel Bow says, loves Labyrinth. Um, what do you guys use for shaking your paints? Uh, as far as what we have here, I don't I don't put like any BBs or anything in mine. Have you ever done that? Dave? Uh, I haven't. No. I usually I just just the good old manual. Give it the vigorous, vigorous, vigorous shake. shake. Um, but I have seen some pretty amazing contraptions. Yeah. Uh, in my time, there's a friend of mine, uh, Zach Lanier, who uh, has this awesome sort of traveling paint station set up. Okay. It's a um, Sort of it all folds up into a hang on, move to here. So it's a box about this sort of size, I guess, okay. like a cube. All right. And everything folds out okay. and up and to the side. And then things inside swing out. Dang. And he has like everything in there. There's a um It's like a like a military field desk. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, so you can have all these paints in there, all of his brushes. Um, he has uh, like an LED light on a on a swing arm <laughs> okay. that comes out over his painting area. Uh, but the reason I mention it is that over at the side he has a little nail polish shaker. Okay. That so he like, lifts up the strap, slides his paint pot in. Wow. Thirty seconds later, pulls it out. That, that would be go. thoroughly I, shaken. I wonder if I'm going to even use this right. It's very utilitarian. Is that right? Um, like very, like oh, yeah, yeah. everything's super functional. Yep. And yep. Uh, it's incredible. But it, it, the size, because it all folds back up into a box that size, it's just a work of art. <laughs> yeah, it's, amazing. it's amazing. I love it. Uh, so, yeah, so in the end, really, it's a nail polish shaker. Is yeah, you, you want to get to that one point. That's <laughs> at one point. But yeah, to do it, you've got to, you've got to explain the rest of the work of art. No, of course. Uh, but I have another friend who has a, um, by his hobby desk in his basement, he has a, um, a Sawzall. Okay, yes. A <laughs> reciprocating saw. Yes. Uh, but it's with, one that plugs into the, the power, into the mains power. Right, but without a blade in it? Without the blade in it, but attached like, to it is like a quick release clamp. Yeah. So that's fixed in there. Mm. <laughs> so then he just plonks that in, clamps it up, Jesus. <laughs> I think he's probably working with some really old paint there. But uh, what, are, what are folks in the chat use? <laughs> uh, Peter says, hey, howdy, y'all. Uh, KL says, uh, good morning to both of you. Good morning, KL. Dan, morning. hello from Brazil. Miss you guys. Uh, that's Ann Spritzer. From, uh, he... All right, cool. What are you doing now in Brazil? Did you move to Brazil, man? Um, I thought he moved to North Carolina. I thought he did, too. Yeah. Um, Bruce Smith, meat beaters for shaking paints. <laughs> Walter Budsaw says, have paints will travel. Uh, yep. Rook, that's a cool name, Rook. Uh, I'd love to see a picture of that. 
And Dwayne O'Brien says, I bought this game in expansions just for the minis, yet I can't paint well due to hand issues. Heading over to YouTube to, to, to Choppy on Facebook. Okay. Okay. Boys and their toys. Yes, this yep. is true. We have. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I would, you, know, you know who I'd wonder, uh, like Vanessa Muse? Okay. From uh, yep. uh, Muse Crafts. Of the crafting muse. Crafting muse. Yep. I wonder if she uses any like special like paint shaker or anything like that. Right. Or has it has a uh, a, a cheat technique on no. how she mixes her stuff up like that? Because talk uh, again, talk about you know crafty people in the, in our hobby. Yep. <laughs> There's a reason they call her the craft the crafting muse because I saw some stuff she's working on right now. Right. And it's ridiculous. She did um. What sort of stuff? So, in Dungeons and Dragons, there's a, a beholder called Xanthar. Oh, okay. All right. And, yep. Uh, the newest uh, D and D miniatures coming from WizKids has a Xanthar in it, and she basically made the cover to Xanthar's Guide to Everything. Right. And put like, oh. with that miniature, re did some repaints and and. Um, basically right. yep. up the game on how this thing looks. And one of the things she did is she she painted a fishbowl. Okay. That's like right in front of them. Yeah. And it literally looks like there's a fish inside of it. Oh, cool. The way she did it. Awesome. But there's not. Okay. So whatever that, whatever she did was just like, I don't know, yeah. super freaking cool. So if she has those kind of skills and techniques, I'm wondering if she has any like things in there. So I'm hoping that she watches this and that she is watching right. it. And that she's going to uh, tell us all how to do it. Yeah. That would be cool. She's I've only in Jersey. We should uh, invite her down. Yeah, definitely. I have um, have seen people work with, um, like, creating fish in ponds. Okay. But it's mainly sort of from the from an overhead view. Right. Kind of thing. Is it where you see it, you know, not seeing it through a bowl. Right. But that was done in um, by building up layers of, like, a product called uh, realistic water. Okay. Um, so you put down a thin layer, let it dry, paint in sort of the shape of the, the bottom of a fish. Okay. And then basically um, build it up in layers of the, the clear Someone has to have water. amazing spatial realization oh, yeah, yeah, to yeah. do that. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure there's a lot of practice required as well. well of course. You've got to spend a lot of time. <laughs> right. Trying and failing. So Dan says he lives there in Brazil half of the time now and the other half in North Carolina. No, oh, there we go. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Hey, James. Hey, James. Yes. James, James has joined us. Um, for everybody watching, again, we really appreciate y'all watching. Uh, if you'd be so kind as to share the, this video in any of the groups that you might be in, like the board game group or board game spotlight, that'd be great. Um, because uh, this is being a little bit of a... Rick's phone is being temperamental. It is being temperamental. I don't know if maybe it's the weather outside is frightful. <laughs> it's certainly not pleasant. <laughs> yeah. This seems it like a re that. residual from the hurricane. Yeah. I know that for the last, like, three or four weeks that Leon has been saying, I'm ready for fall I'm ready for fall and I've been like no 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 yeah. don't wish away the summer but now I'm at that point where you ready for now fall? it's officially fall it is on the calendar as of Saturday right I'm ready yeah. okay. <laughs> so when the calendar says it's okay to be ready you're yeah. ready yep I can take it I'm done with the uh, humidity all right so finally <laughs> so as we're painting these labyrinth miniatures I'm sitting here yep. thinking about you know all the great scenes from labyrinth sure and I'm wondering, for all of you watching, what was one of those scenes that, whenever you see it on TV, let's say you're flipping through the channel, and it, oh, there's a labyrinth. What's the scene you hope the, to land on, or that you would get really excited about when you see it when you're watching this show? So, do you yeah, have that's a good one, question. Um, I don't know. I really, I like it all. So I, I'd, I guess I'd hope that it was like, the opening scene, <laughs> so, so I can catch the whole movie. So you don't miss anything. <laughs> so don't miss any of it. Yeah, that's that's actually probably the best answer you can give. It's like 
I just want it to be the opening credits. I want to see all the movie. Where she's out in the out in the uh, the park in yeah, the, the park, rain. Yep, I'm running around. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I think um, I was always a big fan of the Brian Froud um, concept sketches. Oh wow! And yeah. Artwork and books and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So anything with the goblins in it okay. is um, is good for me too. Uh, so many of them. Uh, Carl is talking about the fish and layers. He's seen it. People do it too. He loves it. Yep. Uh, James says, "Tis be lunchtime today. Be Chef Boyardee." Chef Boyardee. <laughs> Would that you should have eaten the Chef Boyardee on the nineteenth? I was talk like a pirate. Day. Talk like a pirate. Day. <laughs> There are some days I'm happy that I work from my basement. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Leona. <laughs> was that a... No, yeah, that was a Wednesday, I believe. Yeah, week. it was. Yeah. It was. So, yeah. I like Talk Like a Pirate Day. Yep. I can imagine that. Uh, Dave was Hoggle. Or Dave has Hoggle, yes. Yep. Uh, Peter says, when Jared is emerging from the Muppet in the sewery place, is one of his favorite scenes. Oh, okay, radio. Yep. Uh, Walter says they're doing another Dark Crystal. I hope that that actually does come to fruition. Yeah, that would be good. Uh, from what I understand, it's supposed to be a prequel to the original movie? That's what I've heard, yeah. It has been ages since I watched the Dark Crystal. I don't know if it... You know how some people would be like, eh, it doesn't really hold up over time? Yep. Some yep. things. I don't know. I haven't I, I haven't watched it in a long time either. And I'm wondering, does it? I'm not sure. Does it hold up? I'm not sure. I mean I like it. There's a lot of great creature design. <sighs> really. Classic yeah. creature design. So oh. and you can't go wrong with having, you know, non-CGI characters. characters. It was oh, for sure, yeah. So much fun. Yep. Uh, James says, and I start Deadmonton this weekend, six weeks of haunting. Oh, okay. What is that? Well, I'm guessing it's a... Holiday? A haunted uh, house near Ed, in or around Edmonton. Oh, that makes sense. Edmonton, Alberta. Okay. I can dig that. Cool. October is going to be so much fun here. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're going to have a blast. Cool. Showing, uh, doing some of the paints that we, you and I have discussed. Yep. We've got a whole list. Yeah. It all worked out. We do. We have uh, zombies. Plenty of zombies. Surprise, mm -hmm. surprise. We do. Uh, some... Some weird stuff. Some stuff from, yep, some stuff from weird. Excited to get hold of that. Yeah. That'll be good. And maybe some other haunting things? Yes. <laughs> the things that haunt the night? Yes. Some night haunts? Yes. Yes, that's right. Is that what they're called, night haunts? Night haunts, that's what they're called. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. I think the uh, pre-orders just went up for Night Vault, Warhammer Underworld's Night Vault. Oh, yeah, that's so, right. Um, yeah, it'll be fun to mess around with, with some of those next week. Not next week, sorry. Week after next. Week after next, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, next week is Zombicide. Zombicide next week, yeah. Yep. Um, James also says Dark Crystal is the best. I think it holds up better than that Labyrinth for him. Yeah. And Dan says, what minis are you guys painting? I missed the beginning. We are painting minis from the Labyrinth board game by River Horse Games, right there. And uh, so yeah, check that out. You can see on the back, it's got a cool little board that shows the labyrinth and uh, everything on there. And it came with uh, one, two, three, four, five miniatures. Yep. Um, all right, five, yeah, five highly detailed miniatures. And uh, They are indeed. Yeah. And we are going to apply all the paints, and hopefully mine will look okay, and we already know how Dave's will look. <laughs> okay. Amazing. Mine will look okay. 
<laughs> I keep looking at my phone because on my phone I have a, a picture of Hoggle. Oh, there he is. Looks a bit <laughs> blown out in that one. But. I'm trying to think what besides Dark Crystal yep. and Labyrinth and you know the, the regular Muppet movies. Were there any other movies that you can think of or anybody watching can think of that were um, highly Muppet used? Did Jim Henson have anything else? Um, there's a lot, just a lot of television. I mean, Star Wars. Okay. Yep. Star Wars yep, did Star use Wars. a lot of practical uh, characters. Yep. They still do, actually, which is great. Yeah. All right, Yoda. Keith, thanks for joining today. Um, James says he has the Dark Crystal game. Oh? Yeah. Cool. Is that also by Ruble Horse? I'm not sure. If it is... I'm asking James. I wasn't asking you. Oh, my God. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure it was. Yoda. There you go. Yoda was a definitely yeah, yeah. a... a uh, Puppet like character. Banthas. Yeah, the Banthas. Banthas. The Tauntauns. The Wampa. The Wampa. Um, in The Force Awakens, the character that was the one quarter portion. Oh. Um, that was played by Simon Pink. It was, yeah. On Jakku. No, yep. why, why are we going back to Jakku? <laughs> Which everybody want to go back? Kermit, well, obviously Kermit, but I'm trying to think of like other epic movies like Labyrinth and Dark Crystal that utilized puppets uh, or had a high level of puppet content. Like, content, yeah, and not any of the Muppet movies because we already know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Actually, um, it wasn't really a Muppet, but. Uh, the creature from Big Trouble in Little China. Okay. Do you remember that thing? Mm. At the very end when he's... Right. Before the end credits and he's on the radio and the, the creature comes up out from behind his, his trailer. And right. It was at uh, Lopan's uh, yep. headquarters. I don't know what they actually called that creature. I don't know. I cannot remember. We'll talk know. about a great soundtrack. <laughs> Labyrinth Which? had such a good soundtrack. It did. Friend. Ludo is friend. Yeah, Ludo's friend. I'm trying to think again, what was Ludo called? Besides, I mean, he was like as a race because he could mm -hmm. he could sing to the rocks. And make a move and I suggested rock singer earlier, but uh, apparently rock, yeah. that's more a profession rather than a race. Yeah. So I don't know. Surely somebody in the in the chat knows. Of course. All right, let's that see would be got. good. Uh, James says he'll post about it in the group tonight. Legend with Tom Cruise, yeah. There was some Legend, yeah. Some slate like the, the, the troll, the the swamp troll. Right. Oh taste in fairies. <laughs> um or maybe not. I, I, <laughs> Farscape had the pilot on TV, the pilot of the ship on Farscape. Was, okay. was kind of a puppet. All right. Or a Muppet ish. Um yeah, I'm trying to think on Legend, you had the little elven and the dwarven characters that were just like highly make -upped. I think the only creature that maybe would have been more of a puppet would have been the, the troll the, um, that spits the, the, right. the, the elf out or the dwarf or whatever looking character. He's like, comes up and is like, ah, and wants to eat Jack. What about uh, Never Ending Story? Oh, psh, perfect. Yeah. Didn't even I wasn't even thinking never ending story. Yeah. 
I, uh, I've never seen it. Are you kidding me? No, I'm serious. Wow. Good movie. And I looked at it and it was like, never ending story. <laughs> Running time, one hour 54. Lies. Lies. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> How can I support this? Um, Kale says, wow, two days off work, Doctor Who and Torchwood marathons on, great background noise for painting along with watching you guys. <laughs> yes. I love Torchwood. So good. I haven't watched that either. You haven't watched Torchwood? I guess it's on Netflix. Is that my... I don't know if it's on Netflix. <laughs> I, I think right now on like um, BBC America. Oh, okay. They're, they're doing a lot of uh, Doctor Who marathoning because the new Doctor Who premieres soon. You mean so. they're not just running... Just because? Star good. Trek Next, Next Generation. <laughs> wow. Every time I flick past BBC America, it's like, oh, Next Generation. Really? Because yeah, yeah. for I, me, it's I, X-Files. Oh, they have always, always X-Files? X-Files. I, I, I can see the tenuous connection yeah. with Next Generation with um, Sir Patrick Stewart. But <laughs> yeah. what's the tenuous connection I have with no idea. X-Files? But it's like every night from 7 to 10 or something like that is X-Files marathons. All right. It seems or Thursday through Sunday, I don't know. Crazy. Sadly, I, I get sucked into it. It's like, oh, I remember all these episodes. It's so good. That was a great show. Needed more puppets. That it did. I think our programming needs more puppets. What do you think? Yeah. You don't think the two of us are enough? Well, I mean, we are <laughs> characters for sure. But uh, I think it's, uh, it's kind of strange because I believe I have two puppet, three, four puppets in my office. Yeah. That we probably. Let's just say 2019 is going to be a weird, weird year, everybody. We <laughs> um, oh, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, because I, yeah. I do have a few puppets in my office. and uh, He does. You guys, some of you may know who they are. Some of you may not. But... Um, yeah, you excited? I am. Uh, I think, you know, they, I don't know if we're going to be able to give them their own program. Okay. Per se, but I think we may be able to. Maybe once a month, they might come out and tell us about a product. Right. That they're really excited about. Okay. That sounds cool. <laughs> Torchwood is BBC Good Morning America. <laughs> BBC America Chaos, like. Uh, Meg was voiced by Robert Picardo from Star. Track Voyager. Okay. I think, okay. And Meg, I believe, is the troll from uh, Legend. All right. Old Meg. Uh. Which is old Greg's cousin. Okay. <laughs> now I just got to find out who old Greg is. It's... Yeah, don't you don't have to look it up. Okay, it, you'll just be like, why, why, why did Rick even mention this? <laughs> it's like, What's wrong with that guy? Okay. The um, another great scene from the Labyrinth is when um, Sarah ends up back in her her room. Okay. And the there's the the hunched hun, like hunchback goblin. Lady. With all the stuff on her? Yeah. And she goes, oh, here you are. I remember this. is your wonderful. Yeah. Oh, you want this? Oh, and don't forget this. And you need this as well. And she just builds up that yep. awesome um, pile of stuff. She's like, oh, all right. When I was at Dragon Con two, three years ago, someone cosplayed that character. Oh, really? The, wow. The, the, the junk lady. Yeah. Or whatever she was. Um, and it was phenomenal. That's awesome. Yeah, it's that's one of the things about you know the convention scenes is you get to see some of these amazing characters that you you know the pop culture characters yep. and people put a lot of heart and soul into what they what they build and when you see something like that or there's another oh there's another one uh, uh, Caesar from P Planet of the Apes the original right, yep the, um, from like I was it the late sixties yep. Um, when he's a janitor, I think it's Return to Planet of the Apes or something like that. This, okay. The second one, uh, and he's in that big building and he's and he's like a, doing janitorial work, 
Okay. Someone at Dragon Con dresses up as that character every year. And and cleans. And, and is cleaning <laughs> like around the bar area, like with with like a little like a broom and dustpan thing. And that's funny. It's so good. That's great. Doesn't talk to anybody. Just does does her thing. Right. It, it's so hilarious and just amazing. Nice. That is cool. So that's what I'm thinking is this. I have, I have never seen. Ludo is a cosplay. Oh, okay. But uh, yep. I would love to. That would be great. Have you seen Hoggle? I haven't. I've seen Jareth. Yeah. Jareth is super popular. Everybody wants to be attractive, Jareth. Right, the Goblin King. Come the on. Goblin King. With the crystal globe in the beginning where he's like doing yep. the thing with his hand and it's super cool. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, Walter says he loves the April Fool's episodes of X-Files. James says Matt Smith, David Tennant, and John Barrowman were at Edmonton Expo this past weekend. Ah, oh, that's super cool. And do that to a D&D group. Keep loading them up. <laughs> yeah, with stuff. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I actually think I have a miniature of a D&D &D companion. Oh, that, just, just loaded down. Just, yeah, it has backpack, bags. You know, all the cooking gear that a yep. character would need. Excellent. All right. If I ever play D&D &D again, I might just have to have a character that wields a skillet. Oh, yeah. Like a cast iron skillet. Yeah. So that you can... Uh, one one you before bludgeoning damage. Well, you, you don't have to like, carry as much. Right. Can be a weapon, can be a shield. I'm trying to think of a... Can cook your eggs. <laughs> There's this show, um, Disenchanted, on Netflix. Okay. That uh, these two characters have this giant skillet that they're going to cook the king and his son in, and then they use a skillet, a smaller one, to, to, to <laughs> maximize it. And it's like, hey, who would have thought that, you know, <laughs> this would be so handy? You know? Because the, the, they treat them like um, redneck swamp people. Right. So they have that whole accent and stuff going on. Right. Excellent. Okay. How's Ludo coming along? All right. Looking good? Oh, cool. Yeah. Looking neat. Very Ludo-ish. Yep. It's kind of nice just to sort of paint on a single Single mini, little board game mini. Yeah. After the spell effects and the elementals of the last couple of weeks. <laughs> right. Uh, James says he's got to go. Paint oh, safe. Bye, James. Thanks, James. Um, Emerald Dragon says, hey, what's up? How's the weather over there? Hope you, your day is wonderful today. Thank you so much. Uh, we actually highlighted the, the Kraken that you sent already earlier in the program. But there it is again. It looks it amazing. Is out. Yeah. Awesome. So good. Uh, thanks very much for that, Michael. Very cool. There we go. Excellent. Yeah. And uh, so what's everybody, as far as, like, earlier we did talk about works in progress, and we know a lot of people have been posting them up. So what's everybody working on right now? And if you haven't posted your pictures of work in progress into the group for the Mega Paint set, you might want to do that, because right after this program, I'm going to jump on, on Facebook, in the, in the Facebook, Facebook group Painting Happy Little Minis, and uh, pick a winner and send this off to them. Yep. Get in there soon. Yeah, yeah. And if again, if anybody out there remembers what they actually called, like what Ludo is as a race, because he sings to stones, I'd like to. You'd like to know that answer. Yeah. <clears throat> so. With it being the fall, Dave, do you know one yep. of the things that I'm really, I get really excited about? Uh, pumpkin spice lattes? No, 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 no. 
I'm sure I would. I actually, I don't think I've mm. ever had a pumpkin pumpkin spice latte. Uh, maple syrup lattes? Oh, man. Could you imagine? Yep. I would eat, I would drink those every day if they existed. Yep. They probably do. You could probably just be like, squirt some maple syrup in my latte. Yep. But no, um... The, the, <laughs> Sorry. The fall programming. Uh, oh, okay. TV. Uh, TV full proof. All the shows come back on the superhero shows on CW. So like The Flash, Legend of Tomorrow, Arrow, the whole Arrowverse, uh, Supergirl, Gotham, all the comic book related TV shows return. Excellent. So I get excited about that. Well, that's and, fair enough. And yeah. speaking of comic book shows coming back uh, on. You talking about this weekend? I'm not. Oh, okay. I'm um, talking about, what's the, what, what's the other thing I like to talk about besides maple syrup? Uh, Walmart. Oh, I don't talk about Walmart. <laughs> Jesus, Dave. Oh, okay, so there's a limit to what you'll talk about. Yeah, I, I will talk about Walmart. I'll <laughs> talk about Walmart, but no. I talk about I really, uh, Netflix. Netflix, okay. Daredevil Season 3. Oh, okay. Is coming out uh, in October, so... The teaser trailer for that dropped recently, and I'm a huge Daredevil fan. Excellent. And the actor who plays Daredevil, who um, is also in the movie Stardust, um, if you've ever seen that movie. No, I have not. No. Uh, it's worth a, it's worth a watch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you like Neil Gaiman, it's worth a watch. Did they only just say no? Yes. <laughs> It's just like a no with no follow-up. <laughs> Carl's like, Netflix. <laughs> Netflix, Netflix. You guys thought you'd get a way yeah. that I, I wouldn't bring it up. But I did. Yep. Here's one of the dangers of having Rick on the show. <laughs> the occupational hazards. Yeah. You're good with that. I do try. <laughs> That's true. We got here for we got about fifteen minutes. So do you think you'll have Ludo finished? Um, I don't know if I'll have him finished because you know I don't paint fast, but I'll have. Looks like he's almost done. Mm -hmm. I don't know as far as this uh, picture of Hoggle that I've got here is. It's got him with some pretty clean socks. What? Like. White, clean white socks. Which kind of thinks a bit strange. Thank you. Um, what today is clean socks? Maybe it's the yeah. one thing he takes care of. <laughs> oh, it's gotta have, gotta have some clean socks. I kind of feel like, have, based on the look of the box for him, yeah. that uh, doing like a strong, do you think a strong tone to get into the, the crevices to give that? Yeah, yeah, I think that'll work. Okay. Yep, definitely a strong tone wash from Army Painted. For sure. Sorry if you guys are hearing that whistling sound. I'm just trying to, because it's got to dry a little faster. <laughs> not it. Oh, one of the, um, the funny things, obviously, you know, it was just in fixing our mics, but um, mm -hmm. I realized I probably need to wear a shirt with a stronger collar. I don't know, what are we wearing today? No. It's a cool robot. robot. Yeah. It's, uh, I'm, wearing, I'm wearing this shirt because uh, my wife okay. cleaned up in, on, on my side of the bedroom. Um, okay. over the weekend and so everything that was in my closet is now in tubs because I really don't wear it anymore Okay. and the things that were in my chest and drawers are now in the closet and the things that were on top of the chest and drawers are now in the chest, in chest and drawers, drawers. Okay. which is where I usually so that's where I should be housing my sort of most popular t-shirts Sure. that sort of thing I can dig that my shirts that are in the rotation but uh yeah, but at the moment I can't find anything. Hmm. <laughs> it's not where it's supposed to be. 
Uh, Walter says, Dave, what do you put in your wet palette? Oh, um, as far as... Maybe like the, the cloth? Or the, is it like a wax paper? Okay, I'm just going to pull it aside. Actually, this is... Uh, so this wet palette is uh, one recently released by uh, Red Grass Ames. Um, so it's the, the one that has the orange lid. Um, called the Everlasting Wet Palette. And it comes with a, like a sponge, an antibacterial sponge, which sort of sits in the bottom of the, the tray there. And then the paper is, um, I'll hold this up here. You can see that there. So 50 hydration paper sheets. Uh, comes in the pack. Hydration paper sheets. So uh, the order that I placed came with two of these packs of 50 sheets. Okay. And I suspect I'll run through those in about eight or nine months. Between here and ho home? Hmm? Yeah, between here and home. Yep. Okay. I mean, when I get home, I'll use still use the same sheet. Oh, okay. Um, as I'm working, but yeah. It's been a really uh, interesting experience learning to use the, the wet palette. The wet palette. Because I know when, before you had it, you didn't really use one. No, not at all. So what I'm finding, actually, is that my painting is sort of a, taking a little bit longer than I usually would. Okay. Um, but it means that, also means that my, my painting's a little bit smoother. Okay. Which is nice. So I'm okay with that. And it is fun sometimes, you know, to close it up and like come back two days later and still be able to use the same paints. <laughs> yeah, that is convenient. Yep. Definitely nice. So this weekend, if anybody yep. watching oh, yeah. is in the Baltimore area, we are going to be at the Baltimore Convention Center for Baltimore Comic Con. And for um, on the preview side, so on the comic book side of our of our fun company that we work for, um, doing like interviews with artists, writers, creators, publishers, and stuff like that that are going to be there. Is all of that stuff going to be going out live? It is not. Oh, okay. It'll all be pre-recorded, cool. and you'll see it. But tomorrow, I I ask everybody watching, make sure that if you don't already like or follow Previews World on Facebook, that you do that. I say that because. Here at the at our studios, we've been filming and practicing for uh, for a couple months now to get this program that we're going to be. You're going to see it tomorrow. Um, Johnny and Leona have worked very hard on the backside of the editing and and the graphics and everything that's going to that goes into it. And then uh, you all know Thea and Troy. I, I think in, from some of our other stuff, maybe. Maybe. Um, that, and they're going to be hosting a program tomorrow, and I think it would be awesome if you all watched it and shared that. It'll be uh, 4 p.m., Leona, right? I think that's right. It launches at 4 p.m. tomorrow um, yep. on the Previews World site called Previews World Weekly. Uh, so cool. check that out. It's going to be a lot of fun, and we're really excited to see where it goes. Excellent. Everybody's... Thanking you for your information on the wet palette. Oh, no worries. All good. All right. Here we go. Time to do this fun wash. See how it turns out. You get just enough time for that. I think that's. Oh, we got plenty of time. Paint a little bit more shadow into Hoggle's creases and crevices on his face. Oh, Hoggle. Whoa. I'm trying to, he's, he's a voice I don't, I don't know very well, so. Right. I'm not going to try and do it because none of it sounds right in my. In your head? No, in my accent. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think it's looking pretty good, though. And then I get 
to work on this guy on Thursday. Yeah, it's going to be really cool. Sir Didymus. Sir Didymus and his riding dog of war. Yep. Ambrosia. Is that the name? I'm pretty sure it's Ambrosia. It's Ambrosia or Ambrosius, but I'm pretty sure it's Ambrosia. Oh. I'm going to do a quick image search for Sir Didymus. There we go. Oh, and apparently there is a Sir Didymus dog costume <laughs> that you can buy. Oh, that's hilarious. Let's see if we can find that. All right. <laughs> Success? Success. Let's see, see that, Leona? Check that out. Oh, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. But yeah, that'll be fun. Another great work on that. Yep, Ambrosius. Hmm. Now you just need to let that dry. It's kind of fun. I've actually been um, also working on some models for a uh, like a paint tutorial. Okay. For uh, bolt action by Warlord Games, yeah, they've got a um, a few new sets of paints coming out later in the year, uh, all by the Army Painter. Okay, but they've all been specifically formulated, uh, and the colors chosen to work to basically be paint the base coats, dip it in the strong tone varnish. Okay. Paint, it, uh, paint the anti-shine sort of matte varnish over it, right. and you're good to go. Wow. So Like a super quick. Yeah. Yep. So at the moment, at home, I have one model for each of the, the four main nations that were involved in World War II. So oh, wow. The Soviets, the British, the Americans, and the Germans. Okay. Um, and they're all sitting there drying. The European conflict. The European conflict. Sorry, yes. So... I was going to say, the Japanese yep. would be like, hey, we're a part of that. That's true. They were. <laughs> they were. The European theatre. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to pull down Jareth and Sarah. There we go. How's he look? Ridiculously good. <laughs> it looks okay. <laughs> looks okay. Hooray! No, I was wondering, I need to find a better, better shot of Sididimus. Or Ambrosius. All right, and here's... Oh! Of course. I've literally been that guy all day. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Oh my goodness, Luda must be so heavy. Stop the stop the <laughs> stop rotation. The spin, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, once that uh, that wash dries, mm -hmm. so it's a, a matte finish. That'll look good. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I just do the base, and he will be complete. Look, I mean, look, look at Luda or uh, freaking Hoggle. Hoggle. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> hey, Sarah. Cool. Yep, yeah, Elon Musk was defeated by Ludo. Yep. <laughs> uh, we know we know what the what the Elon Musk uh, spinner can't can't handle. Yep. Oh, that's awesome. All right. Well, it's again, thanks everybody. Day. What's that? I think it's gonna be fantastic. Oh, that's gonna be Spending a lot of fun. Up, uh, yeah. Him. Loads of uh, loads of detail work. Mm -hmm. I think the I have a feeling that his. Um, oh yeah. Uh, What's that? That's gonna be tough. The, um, all of the, what do you call it, um, the barding, I guess. Oh, on here. Yeah. The tablet over his, uh, over Ambrosius. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'll go this detailed. Yeah, because that, that right there is crazy. Crazy detail. <laughs> I'm going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Sarah, we got these. These are part, um, for everybody watching, just, uh, 
We are painting miniatures from the Labyrinth board game by River Horse Games. Um, so today, Dave did Hoggle, I yep. did Ludo, and when if you come back Thursday, you will see uh, Jareth, Sarah, and... Um, Sir Didymus. Sir Didymus. Sir Didymus can be uh, painted. Being painted, which will be a lot of fun. Yep. And we'll have, uh, uh, I believe it'll be Gretchen and Natasha will be joining you on, yep. on Thursday. Uh, yep, because be he'll be at Baltimore Comic Con. Yep, getting everything set up and everything ready to yeah, go. For the insanity that that's going to be. Yep. And then, so who's going to be there? It'll be you. It'll, it'll be, be me, Johnny, Johnny, Josh, Kevin um, from our space here. Right. Troy will right. be doing all the interviews. Okay. Um, and, and Saturday from 1 to 3, Matt Stagmer from Men at Arms. Okay. Uh, we'll Reforged be uh, will be yep. at our booth. Cool. And Ken Lashley. Um, X-Men artist and he's currently doing the new Magic the Gathering comic, some cover work for that book. Okay. Right, yeah. And uh, Milestone cool. and he's got a lot of projects that he works on. He's, he's one of the top rated um, comic artists right now. Oh, awesome. Um, so he'll be at our booth all weekend long. Cool. And uh, yeah, so we got a lot of cool content coming out yep. of, of uh, Baltimore this year. Excellent. And yeah. um, Mia's going to be there. Oh yeah. Natasha. Mia. Gretchen. Yeah. Natasha and Gretchen and Theo are going to probably swing by. They're not necessarily right. going to, they don't need to be at the booth. Be working but there, they're, they're going to be at the show. Be around. Okay, walking cool. about and, and seeing stuff. Uh, and then, of course, some amazing publishers, Boom Studios, SourcePoint Press, um, Valiant. Um, there's there's going to be some really good Is Big City going to be there? Big City will not be there. Okay, they but they're going to be at They'll be New, at New York, York, York Comic Con, which is the week after. Correct, yeah. yeah so All the Comic Cons. Yeah, so this the is like the last happen. real big push of Comic Cons <laughs> for me. And for our company, yep. Uh, and then we get like a eight week ish break before Pax Unplugged. Right. Okay. Yeah. So yep. it's it's pretty crazy. It's not even going to be that. Not, yeah, it's not it's even. Eight weeks. Like, I, I like to say eight weeks because it makes me feel weeks. good yeah, about yeah, that. that break, but it's not eight. It's weeks. more like six, right? Yeah, it's more like six. <laughs> um, and plus, cool. time and space are just not my thing. I'm this not, is true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> one last push: if you're not a part of the Painting Happy Little Minis group on Facebook. You need to join up and post it a work in progress ASAP because right after this, I'm going to be going uh, over to my computer in my office and picking a winner for the Army Painter Mega Paint set. And we're going to he's going to give you about he'll give you about ten minutes to get in there. Yeah, sign up. Ten minutes, fifteen minutes, something <laughs> like that. So hurry up. Uh, um, if anybody hasn't joined up, I'll make sure I, I'll I'll accept you into the group and then yep. I'll go ahead and give you about ten minutes. To post some the post work in progress. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah. So that's been our episode today. Uh, Very cool. Yeah. We. Had, I think it's it nice to have you back on. Yeah. It's always nice to be back here <laughs> in, in the hot seat. Um, so this has been painting happy little minis. I'm Rick. I'm Dave. And we'll see you at the game store. We're super excited to share that our new book, The Overstreet Guide to Collecting Tabletop Games, is now available. We love tabletop gaming as much as you do, and we're so thrilled to share the finished book with the community. This book covers the history of the tabletop industry, from classic board games like Monopoly to collectible card games like Magic, and of course, RPGs like Dungeons and Dragons. The book also highlights some of the top talent in the industry, featuring interviews with Peter Atkinson, Matthew Mercer, Larry Elmore, and many more. Plus, we chatted with collectors from all walks of life who shared their own knowledge and insight about tabletop collecting. We also discuss everything from the impact of crowdfunding on the current state of the industry, as well as take a look at all sorts of ways to preserve your collection for years to come. This book provides a perfect snapshot of the tabletop industry at large and shows what makes this hobby so great. You can head into your local game store or comic shop right now and pick up your copy of the Overstreet Guide to Collecting Tabletop Games. If they don't have it in stock, you can order your copy through previews, through Game Trade Magazine, or through gemstonepub.com. Thanks for watching Painting Happy Little Minis. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below, and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.